IT band syndrome or runner's knee presents as lateral pain over the knee, commonly seen in runners or other repetitive weight bearing activities. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Zach Duane here at Performance Sport and Spine. In this video on IT band syndrome, we're going to go to how to differentiate it from other issues that can present similarly. We'll cover some common myths. We'll address some biomechanics you should be aware of. We'll go over some training errors that are important. And then lastly, we'll address exercise, going from low load to high load options. The IT band is a dense connective tissue that runs down your lateral leg. It originates in the lateral part of your pelvis, TFL muscle, and glute max, which we show here. It inserts in part of your lower leg, tibia bone, kneecap, and thigh bone, or femur. Some fun facts about the IT band is we're the only animal that has one. Initially, when you're born, you don't have one, but it develops from stress of weight bearing and walking over time. Now we'll go over how to differentiate IT band syndrome from other sources that can cause lateral knee pain. Typically with IT band syndrome, the pain is worse going downhill, narrow trails, and there's a large increase in training volume. Other issues such as distal hamstring tendinopathy, it's worse going uphill. The pain gets better as you go, and the faster you go, the more it hurts. Another issue to be aware of is lateral patellofemoral pain syndrome. Typically these cases are worse with loaded flexion, worse with stairs, and worse with prolonged sitting. Lastly, lateral meniscus injuries can also present with lateral knee pain. But these patients typically are over the age of 40, running on hard surfaces is worse, pain with loaded flexion and squatting, and then lastly, there's some morning stiffness of about 20 minutes. Myth number one, that IT band syndrome is caused by tightness or restriction. So you can't walk into a gym nowadays without seeing someone stretch or foam roll their IT band. But are they actually elongating the tissue? A study by Siebert in 2020, they found that the iliotibial band can withstand substantial tensile forces and that clinical stretching is highly unlikely to cause any permanent changes. Another paper by Chaudhry in 2008 found that using three-dimensional models, very large forces outside the normal physiological range are required to produce even 1% compression or shear force in the IT band. In addition, since foam rolling only adds compressive forces and no tensile forces to the IT band, it's extremely unlikely that it causes any permanent changes as well. Myth number two, that IT band syndrome is caused by friction. So historically, we thought that the IT band inserts in only one spot and that as you bent your knee, it would pop back and forth, causing irritation of the underlying tissues. However, a study by Faircloth and all in 2007, they found that the IT band cannot create frictional forces by moving forwards and backwards over the epicondyle during flexion and extension of the knee. And the perception of the movement of the IT band across the epicondyle is an illusion because of the changing tensions in anterior and posterior fibers. So if the issue is not caused by friction and the IT band can't be stretched, what's causing your pain? The current theory is that it may be excessive compression. So as you repetitively load the leg through running and other activities, if your knee excessively goes inwards or you're bow-legged, combined with training errors and weak glutes, this may make a perfect storm for the pain. So now we'll talk about some common training errors. As we talked about earlier, some things are less tolerated than others. So if you currently have pain and your IT band is irritated, some things that you can do to modify temporarily is you can decrease downhill running, you can decrease trail running, and you can decrease total volume for a while. One thing that is typically tolerated better is running uphill, so that may be an option. Now we're gonna address biomechanical factors. Now there's four factors that you can look at. Now each case is a little different, so some factors may be relevant and some may not. There's no cookie cutter approach, and so each person has to tailor this to their own personal condition. So the first factor is to increase your stride width, which is how far your feet are from each other. People with very narrow stance may benefit with making a wider stance as we demonstrate here while running. Second factor is knee window. And knee window simply means the distance between your knees. Now people with a narrow knee window, as we demonstrate here, may have some added compression and but benefit by having a larger knee window as we demonstrate here. Next is reducing crossover. And crossover simply means that you're placing your leg on the ground across midline relative to your body. Now reducing this or having a wider stance or gait may help reduce that compression we talked about and help alleviate symptoms. Lastly is increasing your cadence or stride rate. So what this means is that for a distance that you would normally take in 100 steps, you would increase it to about 110 steps. Now this will take a little bit of the stress and load off the knees and place it onto other joints of your lower extremity. For more irritated cases, a calming down period may be necessary, where you're gonna to wanna to reduce your activity, change your load modifications, and do some cross training. Choices like recumbent bikes and stair steppers aren't good, whereas walking on flat surfaces and swimming are. Now we're gonna go over exercises for IT band. We're gonna start with low load exercises and then progress to moderate to high. We recommend most people start with low load exercises and do two to three times a week, about 10 reps. Now this will vary on the individual. 
First exercise is the sideline arch. Use one hand to support your head, bend the bottom leg and straighten the top leg. You're gonna arch your leg back in a circular motion and then forward. You should feel gentle tension in your posterior buttocks and you wanna keep your leg back relative to your spine. The banded clamshell. Use one hand to support your head, put a band on your legs just above your knees, put your feet stacked on each other and then you're gonna lift your knee up towards the ceiling, slow and controlled and down. Your feet should stay stacked and again you want to feel that gentle dull tension in your posterior buttocks. Increase the resistance of the PT bands as needed. Prone muscle kicks. Laying face down you're going to bend your knee and then drive your foot up towards the ceiling using your buttocks. Now you don't want to feel tension in your lower back so sometimes it helps to lightly engage your abs as to minimize any low back arching. Some people may need to bring their leg out a little bit to open up the hip a little. Glute bridge, laying on your back with your feet close to your buttocks. You're gonna drive your hips up towards the ceiling, feeling that gentle dough tension in your posterior buttocks. You wanna minimize any tension or tightness in your low back. Some people may benefit with digging their heels in as they do it or driving their knees outwards as they drive their hips up towards the ceiling. Seated banded external rotation. In a seated position with the band around your legs above the knees with your feet flat on the floor, press your knees outwards, engaging your glutes, feeling that gentle dull tension. Increase the resistance of the band as needed and press out to tolerance. We're now going to go over moderate exercises or level two. One thing that we recommend is that your pain should be at three out of 10 or less before starting this section. Single leg hip hop. In a standing position with your hands on top of your pelvis, hike one hip up towards the ceiling or your ear, trying to maintain balance and control on the stance leg. Squats, with your feet in a position of comfort, you're gonna squat down to tolerance, standing up, emphasizing your glutes. Now, working on increasing your depth is important as it helps emphasize the glutes. Some people may benefit by sitting on a box initially until they get more control and confidence. Seeing the leg step up and step down. With a small step initially, step up with one leg, and then down with the same leg, and then repeat. When doing this, try to emphasize the glute by keeping your upright torso and maintain pelvic control and keeping your knee from excessively moving in or outwards. Band walks. Place a PT band around your leg just above your knees. Slightly bend your legs and press your leg outwards in a lateral motion and step. Be careful not to lean your torso and use your glutes to emphasize your hips. Walk one direction and back. From there, you can progress to the band around your ankles and proceed to do the same motion. And then lastly, the most challenging position for your glutes is placing the band around your midfoot as we demonstrate here. Single leg lateral swing. Standing on one leg with the knee slightly bent, press the opposite leg outwards at a lateral direction, feeling that gentle control and the deep tension on your posterior buttocks. The stance leg should be relatively controlled and stable throughout the movement and then alternate. We'll now go over high load or level three exercises. Before doing this, we recommend that you can walk 30 minutes or run one minute without pain. Single leg squat. Standing on one leg, you're gonna squat down to tolerance, keeping an upright torso and emphasizing the glute. As you stand up, make sure to feel that gentle dull tension in your posterior buttocks. Increase depth as tolerant and then switch sides. Lateral lunge. Holding a small kettlebell or dumbbell or some other object, you're gonna step out with the leg laterally and then press the hip backwards. Again, opposite side, press the hip backwards. You should feel that gentle dull tension in the hip of the knee that's bending backwards. Try to keep the other knee and leg as straight as possible throughout the movement. And again, it's a horizontal step, pressing the hips backwards. Single leg deadlift, holding the weight in the leg that's gonna go backwards. Press the leg back as far as you can, letting the torso fall down towards the